Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, flying wings and mixed body wing concept like the new Airbus prototype Maverick. Is this the future of civil aviation? And if it is, why haven't we already seen variations of this carrying passengers? Stay tuned. This video is brought to you in cooperation with NordVPN. Now, if you are like me, you spend a lot of time on public Wi-Fi, like maybe on airports or in hotels or on restaurants, and if you do, your data is at risk. There's always a chance that someone with malicious intent is sitting there trying to swipe off your browser data or your password. So what you need is a good VPN service, and NordVPN is a good VPN service. They have thousands of servers located all around the globe, which will make sure that your VPN service is not lagging and is as quick as possible. And if you use it, you will have up to six devices that you can use on a single login. So you can use your smart TV, your iPhone, your laptop on the same login. Now, if you're quick and you use this link here below, which is nordvpn.org slash pilot, or the uh, coupon code pilot, you will get a whopping 7% off the normal fee of NordVPN. And you'll get one month for free. And if you're really quick, you might be able to catch their birthday deal, which is when you sign up to a three-year plan, they will gift you either one month, one year, or three years for free when you sign up. So check it out. All right, so uh, I hope that you've been following the aviation news during the last few weeks. If you have the Mentor Aviation app, you will get both pushes and you'll get aviation news updates every day. And if you have, you would have seen that Airbus have come out with a radical new concept called the Maverick. Now, the Maverick is it's not a pure flying wing, but it's a, it's a mixed body wing concept. Okay? So... Flying wings has been around and has been thought about by aircraft engineers from the dawn of aviation. If you go back to as early as 1910, you had people like G.W. Dunn or Hugo Junker who was experimenting with flying wings. And then during the 1930s and 1940s, you had some military adaptions as well. Uh, and then, and of course, that kind of edged out into what we all know as the iconic B-2 bomber, which is in my view, one of the most pretty aircraft that has ever existed. But that's only military aircraft. We haven't really seen them as a civilian aircraft. Is there a reason for that? Well, first of all, um, the flying wing, as it is, the flying wing, the pure flying wing concept, it lacks a horizontal and vertical stabilizer. So it uses only the wing. And the benefit of that is that you get lower drag because of lower surface area, but also because the whole body and wing can be used to generate lift. But because you don't have a vertical and horizontal stabilizer, it also means that your ability to move the center of gravity of the aircraft decreases quite a lot. Um, in, a, in a conventional aircraft that looks like a tube, the one that you know, the, uh, um, the stabilizer, the horizontal stabilizer, will allow the aircraft to move the weight, fuel, passengers walking around, things like that, without it having any kind of problem stability-wise. But in a flying wing, since you don't have a um, horizontal stabilizer, that is actually part of your elevon, which is at the back side of the wing. It means that that area that the aircraft can kind of, you know, tolerate movement of, um, of this center of gravity becomes much, much smaller. So that's one of the issues. Other issues is that it has always been inherently uh, unstable. Um, it, since it doesn't have a, a, a rudder to help it during the turns, the, every time it turns you need some kind of sophisticated uh, drag device on the downward wing in order to make sure that the aircraft is actually turning and not just banking. Right? 
But that's the flying wing. The concept that Airbus came out with looks different, right? The Maverick is not a flying wing. It's a combined wing and body um, aircraft concept. And that is, is a different thing, all right? That will actually take the benefits of the flying wing, which is to enable the, the aircraft body to generate lift, hence have less drag. And it will also be able to, um, to place the engines above the aircraft rather than below the wings. And since it does that, it means that you will be able to fit much larger, much more efficient, ultra high bypass engines to the, um, to the aircraft. So there are some, some really obvious benefits. The aerodynamic air benefits are probably between 20 and 30%, and it's, you know, that's a lot when it comes to, um, comes to drag. But I think that the, the real major benefit is going to be the, uh, the possible implementation of future engine technologies to this. Okay, so there are some really glaring obvious benefits, but what are the challenges? Why haven't we already seen this? We know that NASA has been working on it for several years. Uh, we know Boeing has, concept, has had a similar concept. Uh, Airbus is obviously working on it right now. So why isn't it already flying? Well, there are a few things that we need to talk about. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the, um, uh, the pressurization. Right. There's a reason that aircraft that you're flying and the aircraft that you're thinking about at the moment are formed as a cylinder. And that's because when we're flying at high altitude, we need to be able to pressurize the aircraft for you guys to be able to breathe. It's a good thing. Um, when you have a cylinder that you pressurize, the pressure inside will be acting evenly on the entire cylinder. So it is easy to build a, a pressure cylinder that can be fairly lightweight. But in the case of a blended wing body concept, um, the, the body is more like a box. And when you have a box, it means that if you pressurize the box, you're going to have different amount of pressure acting on different parts of that box. So previously, that has been really, really hard to do. Uh, you can do it. It requires a lot of materials. It becomes very heavy and that negates the whole benefit of the flying wing. But now, with the onset of new types of materials, composites, fiberglass, things like that, uh, it is now possible to build a box that can withstand the differential pressures that we need in order to, to fly at the altitudes of maybe 40, 45,000 feet. So this means that recent kind of technology breakthroughs in how we, how we make aircraft can enable us to make Complete, completely, radically new designs like the blended wing concept. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is a little bit more interesting, and that's the fact that when we're flying in a tube like we're doing now, it means that all passengers are kind of sitting very close to the different axes, to the roll axis, for example. When the aircraft is rolling, you're sitting very close to the center of the aircraft, and the same as when you're yawing. If you're sitting in a box and you're kind of going out into the wings where you're sitting as a passenger, it means that those who are sitting at the far outer ends of this is going to feel a little bit different. I'll put it like that. When the aircraft is yawing, for example, uh, while you're kind of feeling that you're yawing like this in the middle, at, at the outer side, you're going to be moving a little bit backward as the aircraft is, is yawing. You know? So there, there are some changes. Now, they might be very, very small, but the problem with those kind of movements is that it can cause nausea, okay? So flight sickness, um, which is something that the aircraft designers is going to have to think about when they create seating inside of the aircraft. Another thing that is also going to be potentially causing nausea is that it's going to be very hard to make actual physical windows in a design like this. You will be able to do them, potentially, uh, but the problem is that since you're sitting in a box, uh, it's likely that the windows is going to be more in the ceiling than next to you. Now, this can be sorted by not having windows at all and putting virtual windows in instead. So you'll be looking into a screen and on the screen you can go through the in-flight entertainment and choose to see, for example, um, you know, the left wing or the right wing or whatever you feel like. Now, this is possible to do but it requires that there is a very, very good video feed, right? There cannot be any lag in the time it takes for, for the aircraft to start turning and to you seeing it on the screen. And the reason for that is that the brain 
will feel that you're moving. And if you're watching something, if you're watching like your own wing and your body, your brain is interpreting that as you seeing the wing. If the wing starts turning or moving without the, the video feed doing this, and we're talking milliseconds here, there will be a disconnect and you, the brain will interpret that into nausea. That's, this is the problem with early adaptations of virtual reality headsets, for example. And even in the flight simulators that we use, when we're taxiing on the ground, there is just a slight delay in the movement and what you see. And anytime that happens, you can become instantly nauseous. Right? So this is going to be an issue, but there are easy and technical solutions to that. All right? Right, so next thing is going to be um, to adapt existing infrastructure. And what I mean by that is taxiways, runways, but especially loading, unloading, and things like air, um, like air bridges, for example. So um, the, the way that the blended wing body concept has been presented is that it looks like it's going to be easily inside of the 80 meter box that you need to have, for example, the, the 777X is inside that, the 747 and the Airbus 380, which is the maximum size of aircraft that you can use on taxiways, right? So it looks like that's not going to be an issue. What's going to be more interesting is how to adapt, for example, the air bridges. Since you're not uh, connecting the air bridge onto the side of a cylinder, you're now kind of attaching it to the front of a wing uh, or potentially uh, from, from below. So this is also technical challenges that can be fairly easily adapted to, but they need to be thought through, right? Same when it comes to loading equipment or loading cargo. Um, all of that is something that's going to have to be made in the beginning only for these type of aircraft, and that will come with a significant cost. So it is something that they have to think about. When we're on the subject of entering and exiting the aircraft, we also have to think about things like emergency exits. So today and tomorrow, when this uh, aircraft is going to be available to us, the rule states that you need to be able to evacuate the aircraft completely using half of the available exits uh, in less than 90 seconds. So these new uh, flying wings or blended wing body concepts need to adhere to that as well. So this means that instead of having um, Emergency exits along a tube, like we're used to now, it's likely going to be emergency exits maybe in the floor, maybe towards the front, maybe towards the, the top, but uh, they still need to be able to do this using half of the available emergency exits. And since the passengers are now sitting spread out, that might actually become easier depending on how the emergency exits are being construed. But it's definitely, you know, all of these are new ways of thinking about flying an aircraft. We've been doing it the same way for a hundred years now. And uh, this is going to be a new way of looking at it, which doesn't mean that it's going to be a worse you know, situation. It just means that we need to readapt the current rules and regulations and infrastructure to suit this new type of aircraft. Right? But it also comes with significant benefits, not only the, the fact that it will be more efficient, which we do need now, the, the, like the aviation industry needs to look at the uh, environmental impact that we have. Obviously, it's going to be much cheaper for the, um, the airlines to drive the aircraft if they're you know, more fuel efficient. But also you'll have the, the possibilities to rearrange seating, for example. So in a, in a box concept like this, uh, you could, for example, have a... Um, you could have seats hanging from the from the uh, from the ceiling, as well as sitting on the floor, which means that you could potentially seat more passengers, or even have it so that the passengers could create flatbeds or almost flatbeds, even if you're in an economy seating, which would be very very cool, right? Uh, I've seen some concepts of that, which looks amazing, to say the least. But I think the single major benefit, the single biggest benefit here, is probably going to be the fact that with this concept, you can start to put the engines on top of the aircraft. This means that you'll be able to create much bigger engines, ultra high bypass engines will be able to be fitted, and the, uh, the ground clearance is not going to be an issue, you know, having the engines under the wings. Now they're sitting at the back as part of the, um, of the vertical stabilizers. And with that, we will be able to really fully utilize new engine technology, which we will have to do, right? New engines are going to have to come. They're going to have to be radically more efficient than the ones we have now. And the current aircraft design does not really allow for much of that. So new design is needed. 
So will we see this then? I think the answer to that is yes. I think that within the next 15 to 20 years we will start to see some type of this concept coming out. Uh, and if that turns out to be radically more efficient, which I assume it will be, then it's likely that we are going to start to see a shift towards this type of, of aircraft in the, you know, on the medium kind of time horizon. We're talking 20, 30 years or something like that. So I don't think that you will see it tomorrow. I don't think that you'll see it in 2025, but in 2030, 2040, it's likely that we'll see some around. And I, for one, is really, really positive when it comes to new developments. Um, I think we have to move this way. I think that it's the only way to kind of deal with the challenges that humanity is facing right now. We need to innovate ourselves out of it. We cannot go backwards. We need to go forward. And the only way to do that is to think outside of the box and actually create some new stuff, which is what this new Maverick concept actually is. So... I think it's great. I think that we should keep working on it. And I hope to be able to fly one myself before I retire. It would be very, very cool. Right, guys, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I hope to see you inside of the Mentor Aviation app where we can discuss this. I'm actually going to create a new forum where you can go in and discuss what you think is going to be the aircraft of the future. So come inside of the app. It's completely free to download. You have the link to download the app down here and you can participate in the forums where we discuss different technical stuff and different things about aviation or flight training. Or you can just come into the chat and talk to me and hang out and talk about regular things with aviation enthusiasts, people who are afraid of flying and, and professional pilots like myself. Or you can get yourself a, um, a collection where you can get up to two hours of me instructing you how to fly the 737, things like engine failures after takeoff, how to set up the 737 from when it's black until it is ready to taxi, and many, many more things. So see you inside of the Mentor Aviation app. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right, guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.